Now that we have torque, let's write Newton's second law for rotation. This tells us that the sums of the torques acting on an object are equal to the moment of inertia of that object about the axis you're considering times the angular acceleration of that object. This relates how fast something is going to accelerate in rotational motion to how hard you're twisting it, how much torque you're applying on it, and that proportionality is the moment of inertia. In solving problems using this, we can examine our situation to know that torque and mass are involved and then draw a careful sketch. Figure out what system we want to consider and then draw a free body diagram for that system, labeling all external forces just like we've always done with free body diagrams. Then we'll identify our pivot point and I'll underline this to emphasize, you need to consider what point you're considering for the sums of the torques. Sums of the forces, you just sum the forces, you have a direction that's positive, it's fine. Sums of the torques, you need to have lever arms that go from the pivot point to the application of the force. So you need to specify the pivot point. Choosing a pivot point wisely can make your life a little bit easier. And then you apply Newton's second law, sums of the torques are equal to I alpha to solve the problem for whatever you're trying to find. As always, check the solution to see if it's reasonable. Here, I've got a little bit of stuff describing what's going on over here. We have a circular path with some force acting on some mass that's going to be rotating about here on this frictionless tabletop. And so if we push with this force F, then we can say that our sums of our forces are equal to mass times acceleration. So F equals MA. Knowing that that acceleration is equal to R alpha for the tangential component, we can substitute that in and say my force is equal to mass times r alpha, which lets us then multiply by another r, say rf is equal to mr squared alpha. And this looks a lot like this over here, where we can say that this rf gives us a torque. This mr squared gives us the moment of inertia of that point object, and then alpha hangs around. So it's not super rigorous there, but hopefully it helps justify how you can go from Newton's second law for translational motion to Newton's second law for rotational motion.